As we join together uh, and following along with the service of Holy Baptism, you're invited to turn to page 268 uh, in your hymnal. We make the, our beginning in the name of our triune God, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dearly beloved Christ, our Lord says in the last chapter of Matthew, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the last chapter of Mark, our Lord promises, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. And the Apostle Peter has written, baptism now saves you. The Word of God also teaches that we are all conceived and born sinful and are under the power of the devil until Christ claims us as his own. We would be lost forever unless delivered from sin, death, and everlasting condemnation. But the Father of all mercy and grace has sent his Son, Jesus Christ, who atoned for the sin of the world, and whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And so I address the candidate, how are you named? Leo William Schleter, receive the sign of the cross both upon your forehead and upon your heart to mark you as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, according to your strict judgment, you condemn the unbelieving world through the flood. Yet according to your great mercy, you preserve believing Noah and his family, eight souls in all. You drowned hard-hearted Pharaoh and all his host in the Red Sea. Yet led your people Israel through the water on dry ground, foreshadowing the washing of holy baptism. Through the baptism in the Jordan of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, you sanctified and instituted all waters to be a blessed flood and a lavish washing away of sin. We pray that you would behold Leo according to your boundless mercy and bless him with true faith by the Holy Spirit, that through the saving flood all sin in him, which has been inherited from Adam, and which he himself committed since, would be drowned and die. Grant that he be kept safe and secure in the holy ark of the Christian church, being separated from the multitude of unbelievers, and serving your name at all times with a fervent spirit and a joyful hope, so that with all believers in your promise, he would be declared worthy of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. From ancient times, the church has observed the custom of appointing sponsors for baptismal candidates and catechumens, and the Evangelical Lutheran Church sponsors are to confess the faith expressed in the Apostles' Creed and taught in the small catechism. They are to pray for them, support them in their ongoing instruction and nurture in the Christian faith, and encourage them toward the faithful reception of the Lord's Supper. They are at all times to be examples to them of the holy life of faith in Christ and love for the neighbor. So I ask the sponsors, is it your help and your intention to serve Leo as sponsors in the Christian faith? If so, say yes with the help of God. Yes, with the help of God. God enable you both to do and to will this faithful and loving work and with his grace fulfill what we are unable to do. Amen. 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 We hear the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. They brought young children to Jesus that he might touch them. But the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. At this time we join together in praying the prayer that the Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Leo, the Lord preserve you. You're coming in and you're going out from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. And so I now ask you, Leo, do you renounce the devil? If so, say, yes, I renounce him. Yes, I renounce him. Do you renounce all his works? Yes. Do you renounce all his ways? Yes. Do you believe in
in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried? He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body? the life everlasting? Yeah. Leo, do you desire to be baptized? <clears throat> Leo William Schleter, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. born under the law, 
But why? He did all of this for what purpose? He did all of this to accomplish what? Well, he did all of this to redeem those who were under the law. You know, one thing that's interesting is to see how language changes over time. There are some words used now uh, that would have never been used 100 years ago, sometimes even just 10 years ago. It's amazing how quickly language can change. Uh, there are some words that were used 100 years ago that are seldom if ever used today. So as I was thinking about the sermon for this week, looking over the text, and specifically that phrase, to redeem those who are under the law, I was thinking about that word, redeem, a little bit more. I decided to do a little bit of research on it. And what I found uh, was this unique study uh, from Google uh, on the use of the word redeem in published books. And the results uh, actually were quite fascinating. Uh, you see, over time, uh, the use of the word redeem gradually rises and it increases in popularity all the way until the year 1827. And then its use just seems to plummet like crazy until the fact that it's hardly used at all today. Now, what does this have to do with anything? Uh, well, the point is this. If a word is used less and less frequently, its meaning often becomes confused uh, or misunderstood altogether. Uh, and it seems at times uh, that is the case with the word redeem when it comes to us and how we talk about our Christian faith. Uh, yes, we talk about Jesus as our Redeemer. Uh, in fact, we have an entire section uh, in the hymnal uh, devoted uh, to hymns about Jesus as our Redeemer. We just sang a hymn uh, about Jesus being our Redeemer. Uh, and yet, we have this confusion over this word a little bit. Uh, we sometimes use the word interchangeably with Savior on the one hand or Deliverer on another. But while both of these convey similar meanings to the word Redeemer, it can lead us to miss out on the bigger picture of what redemption is all about. Uh, so all that being said, uh, what exactly does it mean to redeem something? Well, to understand that a little bit further in terms of our Christian faith, it's best first uh, to look at its use uh, in the Bible. Uh, and what we see is this, uh, words related to redeem, so again, redeem, redeemer, redemption, etc., are used 149 times in the Old Testament. So that's a pretty important concept, but again, what exactly does it look like? Well, when we look at the word redeem in the Old Testament, it has a lot to do uh, with the Mosaic Law, the law given to the Israelites as they were led out of Egypt, uh, the law that was given to them to show them how they would conduct themselves to show that they were set apart from the other nations of the world. And redeeming was a part of this law. There were different kinds of redemptions, but overall, it dealt with this idea of restoring the rights of someone or avenging their wrongs. We talked about this a few months ago with the story of Ruth and Naomi. Boaz was the kinsman redeemer for Naomi's family in which he marries Ruth, the widowed daughter-in-law of the widowed Naomi, in order that they might have offspring and preserve their inheritance. In other instances, if there was an Israelite who was poor and he needed money and he sold his property or his home or even himself for money, what he had sold could in fact be redeemed by himself or another relative for a price. So that idea of redeeming something is clearly an important concept in the Old Testament. But what about the New Testament? Well, compared to the 149 times that it's mentioned in the Old Testament, redeem and words like it are only used 18 times in the New Testament. That's a pretty drastic drop. But does that mean that that word is any less significant? Uh, well, by no means. Instead, uh, the times that the words like that redeem are used, it helps us to enhance the meaning that we've learned from the Old Testament. Uh, so we've talked about redeeming as meaning to regain possession of something, but it's gaining or regaining something in exchange for payment. And your brothers and sisters in Christ, that's what Jesus does for us. Adam and Eve sinned and ensured that all of their offspring, including you and me, would be separated from God. The devil had claimed us as his own. He had taken us for his kingdom of darkness. But when Jesus came, he came to redeem us. 
He came to regain what belonged to his Father. He came to redeem us. He came as the Father sent him himself. But it would cost him, and it would cost him absolutely everything. It would cost him his life as he climbed Calvary's hill. As he was bruised, and as he was beaten, and as the blood flowed from his body on the cross, Jesus took all of our sin. The Apostle Paul even says that he literally became sin for us. He does something that we could never pay for. And as he does that, an exchange is made. And in the exchange, he receives all of our sin, and gloriously we receive all of his righteousness. When he stepped out of that tomb on Easter morning, that exchange was secure. Forgiveness, life, salvation for the entire world, for you, for me, that all was made possible. And how did it come? Well, I came to each of you whenever the Holy Spirit first worked faith in your heart. And for many of us, when did that exchange occur? It occurred at Holy Baptism, just like we celebrated with Leo this morning, just as we all continue to celebrate God's work of baptism, His work of the Holy Spirit within us, as God has claimed us as His children, as He continues to remind us that He took our sin and He has clothed us with the righteousness of Jesus Christ. So redemption involves, again, that idea of an exchange, but it also involves compensating for the faults of something bad, or the bad aspects of something. And of course, we would say Jesus does that for us. He compensates for our sin. And we know this, and we believe this, and we trust this, uh, but still, how often does our sinful nature uh, try to get in the way? Uh, we end up trying to justify ourselves, or trying to redeem ourselves. Uh, and we think about our own actions and we think, okay, well, if I did bad in this way, I can just do a little better the next time. Or if I screwed up against the person in this way, I can just do something a little better for them the next time. And we even try to do this at times with God. That's what our sinful nature wants us to do. But then when we hear the words of James, whoever keeps the whole law but fails at one point has become guilty of all of it. You know, if you break one point, you can't just redeem the one point. You have to redeem the whole entire law. Uh, something you fail at again and again. That's something you fail at. That's something that I fail at. And so as we look at that, we come to this realization uh, that our sin would lead us to think, yes, I need to be redeemed, but there's no way anyone is ever going to do that. There's no way that anyone would ever want to redeem me from all the bad things that I've ever done. But again, dear friends, that is exactly what Jesus Christ does for us. That's because that's who our Lord Jesus is. Now, the final meaning of redeem is to fulfill or to carry out a pledge or a promise. And what did God do right after sin entered the world? He made a promise that he was going to do something about it. That he was going to send a redeemer. Right after the fall, he said that this Savior would come and crush the serpent's head. Jesus was prophesied right after sin entered the world. And in his coming at Christmas, he began his work on earth to do just that. Thanks be to God that Jesus has come to redeem you. That he's come to redeem me. And to redeem all who were under the law. In his name. Amen. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding guard and keep your hearts and lives in this Christ Jesus a life eternal. Amen.